Hello everyone and welcome to the Swiss Alps. Uh, we wish you were here with us. Uh, it's a beautiful day and we are feeling so grateful for this beautiful wilderness around us. Of course the Swiss Alps are here too and we are here today with Thomas. Uh, how do you pronounce your last name Thomas? Uh, it's Wilderman. Wilderman and then in German it is? Wildermann. Wildermann. Did I say that right? You do. Okay good. <laughs> I love all the different languages we encounter as we travel and of course the language that we truly speak is the language of the heart so we we all get by with our translators and our smiles right right yes so Thomas and his wife uh, were Jehovah's Witnesses and uh, for how many years were you a Jehovah's Witness well I was basically as uh, you know as your watchers might might know or how we say we were grown up in the mm -hmm. truth mm -hmm. uh, therefore mm -hmm. I'm uh, I turned 46 this year so mm -hmm. it's uh, like if you would subtract the first couple of years it's <laughs> more than 40 years actually something remarkable about you and your wife that I learned that you are not afraid of giant sharks <laughs> no no we are not oh my goodness <laughs> I think I am and most of us are so uh, I understand you are an amazing diver and so is Evelyn. How long have you been diving and where have you been diving? Yeah well um, we, we love nature obviously we love beautiful Switzerland but uh, we love uh, you know all the places uh, where where God's creation shows mm. us uh, its its magnificent beauty mm, true. and uh, and uh, we were start diving like um, maybe 15 years ago and then we were quite quite intensively diving like for 10 years um, and we've been uh, to many places. We've been uh, to the Galapagos. We've been to uh, Antarctica. We've been to the Bahamas. We've been to Papua New Guinea. Uh, we were diving in the Red Sea. So many places on this beautiful globe. And sure. you have so the variation of of, of Jehovah's <coughs> creation is just uh, is just amazing. You are really that's that's awe inspiring. True. And we would say um, because. Every in, from the tiniest creatures like some from some some snails in beautiful <laughs> colors, which you can uh, you know see in in Papua New, New Guinea. Mm. Um, they, I've seen colors never seen on this planet. You know, you've seen like these pink neon colors, yes, which you use as your marker for studying the watchtower. <laughs> so uh, that is what you normally would not see. Uh, on the surface, right. but underwater there's so much color. This is so beautiful. It's remarkable. And then yeah. if you go, for example, to the Bahamas, and uh, you were we were diving with uh, like uh, tiger sharks. You have like five meter tiger sharks. Wow. And this is really this is like like they have a beauty in their softness. You wouldn't maybe consider that word in the context of a tiger shark, mm -hmm. but it is not like that monster. Like, like uh, you know, like media and other other people would like to to um, to, uh, to 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 think they are. Mm -hmm. It is actually it is beauty. It mm -hmm. is it is majesty, and how yes. they you know they are beautiful creatures and they move in a in a soft way. They yes. are approaching you in a soft way, mm -hmm. and even though you know there is power and there is strength in there in this in this creature mm -hmm. so all of that shows us all the different facets of creation in my mm -hmm. perspective and that is that is one as as god words uh, god's words also says mm -hmm. uh, in in romans right mm -hmm. so we can realize and recognize our heavenly father by his creation so uh, that is one way to approach our heavenly father yes. uh, and christ jesus mm -hmm. but Obviously, we have also his word, which is uh, the other very important uh, way how we can approach them. I think that's a remarkable way to to think about nature as being God's uh, creation. And all the way back from, uh, was it Engelberg yesterday? Uh, Evelyn was telling me about her encounter with this giant tiger shark, oh, like yes. 45 feet long. And I was trying to imagine because... Uh, you know, the media has really hyped uh, people up to have fear about sharks. Yeah. And we can use that really as a metaphor for our own life in approaching things that might be frightening, right? Yes, that's but, true. But, I mean, I think for me, the, one of the most frightening things would be to be face-to-face -face with a 
tiger shark with its mouth open, she explained to me, when they're soft like a kitty cat that wants to rub against you, their mouth is open. Exactly. I that's think true. that's wonderful. So um, I love that we're talking about this because it helps us see that how we approach something makes all the difference. So your approach now to the Bible, in a sense, is, is different too. Just like you can face a shark and not be afraid, you can face a new reality, which is really quite remarkable exactly. and, and very meaningful exactly. to see your courage to, to make a break with a way of thinking that has been drummed into you. I'll try to break my fear of sharks, but you have done something so deep to change your life, to, to have been told that you could not have a personal relationship with God, to the fact that you could discover that you could. Do you feel that the Holy Spirit helped to wake you up? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. If I if I read the scriptures, um, I think that is obviously uh, obvious that uh, that the Holy Spirit uh, takes a huge uh, part in that. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, referring to your analogy, right? Yes. So, a lot of people on this planet are in fear of sharks. Mm -hmm. So why is that? I think that is a beautiful analogy to where we are coming from, exactly. right? Exactly. Yes. Because this is the concept of fear, which is like, it's a small seed which is planted at a very young age. And so mm. is it with sharks, right? <laughs> yes. So it is planted from a very young age through media, through what you hear. Mm -hmm. And so it is an unconscious way of imprinting a certain ide ideology, if you would like to say so. Exactly. So, and this is basically what we've experienced too. Even though if you grew up in something, you have no comparison. So I'm, and this is for me very important, I don't look back with grief and sorrow and anger and, and resentment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not, because mm -hmm. I would not have been uh, w where I am now if I would have not been through all what had happened to me. Mm -hmm. But, and this is all okay. And for me, it is also important if we now talk uh, about uh, Jehovah's love, uh, and one part is obviously uh, through the ransom sacrifice of Je uh, Christ Jesus, um, it is not that, you know, it is not a theoretical or, concept or, or concept of love. Mm -hmm. It is not like a superficial like love, peace and happiness, mm -hmm. what uh, some, some might think. Mm -hmm. uh, now you are with love, peace and happiness and everything is okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that concept of love. No, that's not. I think the scripture is very precise about that love. Mm -hmm. But we have to do our part, which is like we have to believe in what Jehovah was, uh, is trying to convey us through the scriptures. If we do not believe, and it's very interesting, if you dive deep into, the, into belief and faith, there are more than 470 individual verses in the New Testament about, about faith and belief. So I can encourage everyone to carefully study all those verses in the context of those verses and that will help us understand better and to realize or trying to begin to realize the love of our Heavenly Father and so I would like to to share basically um, the thing that from my perspective there are two layers in in the Bible we have the the legalistic view mm -hmm which is an important view, Yes. Um, so. but we have also the relationship mm -hmm. view. Mm -hmm. And so I asked myself, where did it all start? It, start, it started with the fall of mankind. Mm -hmm. And what got lost? The relationship got lost. So that was for me, first and foremost, the relationship of a child of God got lost. So the childhood got lost. Mm -hmm. So that is the deep gap and crack Mm -hmm. which needs to be needed to be filled mm -hmm. and that is the the like the legalistic con it's not a concept the legalistic view in the bible which you can see really from the very beginning to the very end mm -hmm. because the gap was already closed by the time when when jesus offered his his life as a ransom sacrifice for us and in this very moment and i think for me this is one of the important points to understand at that very moment that gap was closed so if I believe in that, and since that day I realized that, 
it's helped me to understand that my sins are already forgiven, not in some distant past, but right now. And I can come back to that childish relationship with my Heavenly Father, because Christ Jesus closed that gap. But it is for me important that I accept that. And I think some of us are really struggling with accepting that love from our Heavenly Father. Because, and this is only my personal view, I think this is because we are so much concentrate on the legalistic way. And even though that is absolutely true, there is a legalistic way that that gap, gap needed to be closed, and that was done by Christ Jesus. But the overwhelming, overarching thing is the relationship which gets, get, got lost. It is like Jehovah is love, and every one of, of us should really let sink that in and and pray for the holy spirit to that we can understand what that really means because if we are not understand what that means the love and love is we know it's a german it's an english word but we know it's agape the 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 the, the greek word beneath and even though it's, it's a, it's a principle-based love, which we all know, that love is not cold. It's mm -hmm. not only legalistic. It has, it has a lot of facets, mm -hmm. that love, which combines all, also our feelings. Because what is, the, what, is the, what is the love between a father and a child? I mean, from my perspective, the understanding of our Heavenly Father is in the Holy Scriptures made in a way that we can sort of understand that. He is almighty. He, is, he has, how should he reveal himself to us mm -hmm. if not in words that we can understand and digest mentally? Yeah. But it's not about only theoretical digestion because the relationship of a father and a child, that is not theoretical. I mean, I can ask a child and he would not explain that in a, in a scientific way the relation to his father and neither would the dad do for his kid mm -hmm. so there is affection there is there is there are feelings involved even though there is a legalistic view if exactly. the if the child dies mm -hmm. she or he will inherit something if the parents or if the if the parents pass away they will inherit something and if there is only a friend to the family he will obviously not inherit something because he's not a son or a daughter or whatever so that is all understood mm -hmm. but the basic uh, the, the the you know the the very core of that that is the relation yes the relation got lost mm -hmm. and the relation will be restored mm -hmm. and it's also important i think for us to understand that the relation uh, it is not that some people might think well it is quite presumptuous that we think we are we are the children of God, mm -hmm. and um, I like to read some of the some of those scriptures which we can I think really benefit from. Yes, indeed. Could I ask you a quick question? Of course, you can. I wanted to ask you: uh, Do you think that God is looking for His children? We are looking for our Father. Um, is He looking for friends, or is He looking for His children? What does the Bible tell us? Uh, the New Testament. Yes, exactly. I, I, yeah. I haven't found the word friends in the New Testament, mm -hmm. um, but he's looking for children. Yes. And the question really is, am I accepting that or not? And uh, thank you for, um, for, for that question, Wendy, because I want to turn to, to John 3.16, uh, which I'd like to, to read. We all know that, mm -hmm. that very verse, of course, but for me it's important to point out to... To really make a difference between that legalistic and that relationship view mm -hmm. because there was the the legalistic view the gap was there and the gap needed to be closed and now it's important to understand what motivates our Heavenly Father to close that gap he could have said and it's interesting we say Jehovah is love Jehovah is not righteousness 
-hmm. even though he is righteous, but yes. he's not, his identification is not righteousness. Right. It's but an attribute, attribute of his exactly, being, of exactly. his essence, is justice. But who comes to your mind yeah. if I talk just about to be righteous? Yes, you're right. It's a little bit cold, isn't it? And in, there's no way to identify with that. Exactly. So when I just hear the word righteousness mm -hmm. without anything else, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the Pharisees and the scribes in exactly. the first century. Mm -hmm. And they, they were loading a huge burden on the people and Jesus wanted to relieve them. Mm -hmm. So am I relieved where I am? That is the question we need to ask us. Because Jesus' yoke is soft, he said that. Mm -hmm. So if I don't feel that way, I don't want to judge that, but ask yourself, why am I so burdened, even if Jesus says, my yoke is soft? So coming back to that uh, John 3.16, mm -hmm. so the legalistic, uh, the, the gap was there. The, the, the separation from our Heavenly Father was, was there. The childhood got lost. Because of the inherited sin. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so we could no longer be friends of God, or I should say, children of God, but we were enemies in a sense. Exactly. Because we were dead in our sins. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And now, coming back to that, Jehovah did not just say, okay, we need to close that, okay, therefore Christ Jesus will become the ransom sacrifice, and then everything is good, okay, we turn on, we go on. Mm -hmm. No, that is not what it says, what it says mm -hmm. there, right? It mm -hmm. says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have an eternal life. That's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So he describes what was the motive of Jehovah to do that. Beautiful. So that was love. It was. So he wanted to have that relationship back. Mm -hmm. Therefore, justice needed to be served, for sure. That was also shown in the Mosaic law. but. The overarching, overwhelming thing was how can I reconcile my children back with me? Yes, so maybe just, uh, righteousness and justice is just an aspect of love. And, you know, seeing that God is love and that His motivation to reconcile us to Him, which was through Jesus, was, a, was such an act of love. Like you're saying, He. He loved the world so much, exactly. so much, that He gave His Son. So in a sense, the, the legal part marches along inside or yeah. beside or exactly. uh, the love. Because exactly. love, love may be something abstract, but we understand it in so many levels, in so many ways. Exactly. So you're saying, again, the true recovery of your spirituality is to see that the legal nature of, of God and His righteousness can only be approached and recovered through love, understanding that it was His love. He, he loved, we love because He loved us first. Exactly. Right? right, as the scripture says. Exactly. And then Jesus, what did He convey to us? He conveyed God's love. Remember in, I think it's Colossians 1, 13 and 14, He talked about how He transferred us yes. from, the, from darkness, yes. right, from the domain of darkness into exactly. the kingdom of the Son of His love. That just always takes my breath away. That means so much to me. Exactly, and that resonates also with me, uh, mm -hmm. what, what John said in, in John 13, 34, 35. We all mm -hmm. know that too. Mm -hmm. But also to emphasize what, it, what it's about, right? Because he says that he, that he gives us a new, uh, a new command. Mm -hmm. um, how will we be recognized mm -hmm. as his followers? Mm -hmm. So it says, where we are. Isn't that a great Bible? German and English on, together. Exactly. So there it is. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove the world that you are my disciples. So why is it a new commandment? What is new about his way of love from the Mosaic way of loving? What well, new? the Mosaic law was based on commandments, right? Yes. So there was, it says it was just to, to learn and which leads to Christ. Mm -hmm. And you know, there is only a necessity for a new law 
if something old is not sufficient. And that was never the plan, mm -hmm. as, as far as I understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. uh, it, is, it is a better way of doing it, because to, the love for God, for Christ, and for each other, that is, that is, that is what it's all about. Yes. And it's not just following like technical commandments, mm -hmm. which can give you a good conscience and then uh, a good relationship uh, to your Heavenly Father. That was the concept of the Mosaic Law. Yes. But um, now he turned, because he said he loved the world so much that he gave, gave uh, his son. And Jesus said that I gave my life for you. So that is truly new because um, that is beyond what was uh, formerly uh, the, 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 the way of the, how the Mosaic Law worked. Yes, thank you for explaining that so well, Thomas. And it made me think about how uh, the standard in the Mosaic Law of love was really ourselves, right? You must love your neighbor as yourself. So how did you love yourself? Well, it wasn't with a clean conscience before God, so God's love couldn't really be revealed. Uh, so it's a new standard through Christ. The love of the Father could be revealed in Him as a sinless person. So now... We have learned that the way back to our Father is to love each other as Jesus loved his disciples. So it's a new command in the sense, too, uh, regarding love. It's no longer myself, love your neighbor as yourself, right? Yeah. You're, not, you're no longer the standard with your sinful inherited state. Now that we've been forgiven, we can love in essence as Jesus did. So do you think that the love that Jesus is, is saying that we should share with each other uh, is really what we see amongst the children of God? Do you think that's possible in the world? If you don't know Christ's love, tell us more about love. Yeah, I, I, um, you can, you can only share what you've experienced, right? Yes. If I, you know, my mind works in pictures. If, if I have a bag with tennis balls mm -hmm. and you ask me, to give me a tennis ball, I can give you a tennis ball. If there is nothing in there, mm -hmm. And you ask me for that, uh, for a tennis ball, I cannot give you that. So I, what, I, what I don't possess, I cannot give. Mm -hmm. So, and, and therefore, if I ha don't have the love, if I don't have it, I can give it. Mm -hmm. So Beautiful. Yeah. We, have to, we have to accept that love through the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. our faith that we are worthy of that. A lot of us, and I can stress that, uh, I think that's that point more and more, um, we have to accept that, mm -hmm. that our Heavenly Father is basing, basically asking us to grab His hands, mm -hmm. His hand. Mm -hmm. And it is us to, to accept that and not to let us tell that we are not worthy of that. Are we, do you think that not feeling worthy is a form of doubting the love of God? Or Not quite sure about that, to be honest, mm -hmm. but um, I think depending where you are coming from mm -hmm. um, it's also you know this this world in which we are living that and that is not a, only a problem of, of religion mm -hmm. that is also like how the society works right mm -hmm. so it's always to 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 be better or to be to be judged you are doing this are oh, you not good enough at that mm -hmm. um, you need to improve on that right. it is like it is from my perspective only in this whole society in this yeah, satanic world. It is always like looking on where you are not good enough. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It is not like where are you good enough, mm -hmm. so you can I can I can support you to mm -hmm. get better in that. Mm -hmm. But rather, ah, oh, where you're not good enough at that. You know what? It, I know what exactly it, what, what it mean. what it what it does to yeah. you, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it is complete, and 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 I think that is that is completely the different way how how Jesus and how Jehovah works. Mm -hmm. They look for something good. The good seed to water mm. and to, to to let that grow mm. rather than to oh no look at that no oh no that that is not good yeah. we need we need to work on that mm -hmm. i'm not saying that you should be blindly or, or ignoring mm -hmm. where we can improve i mean sure. we have certainly uh, some 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 proof in the in the scriptures mm -hmm. like that we should grow the the uh, the, the the fruits of the holy spirit yes. of course mm -hmm. and and we find other pictures that we should bear fruit which means that uh, and, and that that the, the wine uh, will will be um, will be uh, uh, so will be cleansed 
so that we grow more fruit. So mm -hmm. to, to, to work on our new personality, or Romans uh, 12, 1 just uh, came, came to my mind, where in a translation it literally says that we should um, not just put on a new personality, but that literally in Greek means that, that we should change our thinking. So we should tr try to improve on to think how God thinks. Yes. Right? So yes. there is a lot of uh, mm -hmm. encouragement for us that we should improve on us. Mm -hmm. But you could do it on, on, vid, on that way, on an uplifting way, mm -hmm. or you could do it on a depressing way with, with guilt and shame. And uh, you have to do more and more pressure mm -hmm. rather than we were talking about the other day about mm -hmm. that, that, that deed-based uh, deed deed belief. So you could have um, you could have two persons, and you see okay this person is doing that and this person is doing that and it looks on the outside it looks basically identical identical, mm -hmm. but the one inside feels stressed and burdened and pressurized, and the other one feels welcomed and and uplifting and peaceful, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and and these things because what is the difference the difference is something we cannot see on the outside. It's something which is in us. Mm -hmm. So how we feel and how we approach things, because I think that is also something which some might think, now you are on the love concept, mm -hmm. and now all love, peace and happiness, mm -hmm. and you don't do anything, and mm -hmm. uh, you know it is important yeah. to, to, um, to, to go to the people and to talk about that. That is absolutely true. I would never ever neglect that because the scripture says that we want to talk about uh, the, 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 the good news, the good news, what Jesus told us, mm -hmm. that is important. Yes. That is one of the facts, but the very, the very reason why we are doing that, that is Jehovah is not interested in, in deeds per se, mm -hmm. but why you do that? Mm -hmm. Do you do that? Why? Because you love him or do you do that because you have to do it? Because you're going to be punished by a exactly. false prophet or your neighbor or, or somebody. Whomever, whomever. <laughs> yeah. Jehovah loves what we do because we love. Mm -hmm. And he does not love us because we're just doing the right things. Yes. Because that goes back to the relationship level, right? Yes. So it's you can say you have to do that. And that's legally absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. But that's not what our Heavenly Father is interested in. That is not how you go back to become a child of God. Yeah, I'd like to conclude with uh, basically three three scriptures which uh, and, and a short encouragement maybe if I can. Of course. So uh, I, I'd like to go through scriptures which I'd like to read. Um, so uh, the first one is uh, John 5 1, uh, 1 John 5 1 mm. and uh, for, for me it was really revealing to read those scriptures in, in the most unbiased way I was able to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'd like to encourage everyone to do so um, too. So first, first John 5, 1 said, nope, there is the, oh, I'm Jack. I am with Jake, uh, James now. <laughs> that would be, here we go. So it says, everyone, everyone, who believes that Jesus is Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. And I will read those two other verses as well so that we have, uh, have that. Uh, so um, John 1, 12, 13. So John 1, 12, 13 says, But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical re a birth re resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. And the last one is uh, 1 John 3.12. In back to 1 John. Sorry? 
Uh, oh, one. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, it was uh, uh, First John three one and two. See how very much our Father loves us, for He calls us His children, and that is what we are. But the people who belonging to this world don't recognize that we are God's children, because they don't know Him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but He has not yet shown us what we will like, what it will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. That is beautiful, right? Mm. So it says that the world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Yes. And that refers to the love, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that love, you cannot recognize that. So this is my encouragement. Let the love for our Heavenly Father, for Christ Jesus and for the Word grow in the most unbiased way you can do. I made so interesting experiences from dear brothers which called me and said, I've been humbly prayed to Jehovah and asked for guidance by the Holy Spirit and they read God's Word daily and just trying to do that in the most unbiased but humble way, humbly way and ask Jehovah for guidance to realize and to recognize what it's all about. And I can encourage you too, just do that. Just do that and let the Holy Spirit do its work. Do we really believe that the Holy Spirit is the most powerful force in the universe? We all say, Jehovah did all his creation with the Holy Spirit. We believe that the Holy Spirit led people to say prophecies and we see its fulfillment, or we saw already its fulfillment in, in many uh, occasions. Do we really believe that the Spirit, Spirit can lead us to, or is it just a concept? I believe in that Holy Spirit, and I believe in God's Word as a as a deed of the Holy Spirit, as a product of the Holy Spirit. And if you love Jehovah and Jesus Christ as much as I do, and I believe so, then do that. Let the Spirit do its work and buy a translation which uses the name of Jehovah. Um, because I personally feel that if I just, and I don't want to blame uh, a special translation, but just saying that if you read, uh, and we all have read the New World Translation, and that is all good and all fine, but to have an unbiased view to, the, to what Jehovah really wants to tell us, it is maybe good to use another translation, because we are so used to the words we have heard over and over and over again, and that personally for me, did not help me to really get to the core. Because it is more like, you, you all know how it is, you sit in the congregation and you hear the first two words, and then there is basically a movie which is, you know, running in the back of your unconscious mind, and you're not really getting down to what is what, is, what Jehovah wants to tell you in, in his word. So, by another translation, ask for the Holy Spirit and let the Spirit do its work. That I would encourage everyone, because it helped me a lot. Thank you so much, Thomas. We can see that you are just glowing with inspiration and helping us all to, to recover that love that we can have with our Heavenly Father. And it's been such a pleasure to get to know you and your wife, Evelyn, and hopefully someday I can meet your cats see if I can remember their names Pinky and Pepper that is true <laughs> that is true yeah we are co-parenting those two cats uh, with uh, dear lovely uh, dear friends so okay. yeah thank you very much uh, you are uh, every time uh, welcome with Eric and thank you. Uh, thank you very much for having me it was a great great pleasure uh, we appreciate it so much thank you, thank you.